Hey guys, we're in a series called For the One, and this is all about finding the people that Jesus misses most. Who is that one person? Maybe it's you. Maybe it's a neighbor, a friend, a family member, someone at school, but there's people out there that are far from Jesus. And that is the whole reason LCBC exists, is to connect those people that are far from Jesus with their loving Savior. And that's what this whole series is gonna be about. And it's the coolest part is, this is not just a series for us. It's a series for kid ministry, student ministry, adults. The whole church are focusing on the one. That's how important this is. And that's why this is the most important thing we're gonna talk about all year long. Now today we're gonna talk about who is the one and why are they missing? But to do that, we gotta talk about being lost. Did you ever lose something? Okay, so a good example is, did you ever lose like a TV remote? I lose the TV remote all the time. And it's crippling, cause you're like, I can't watch TV. So I lose it in the couch and I don't know why, but the, the, like a mole, the TV remote likes to burrow in to the depths in the bowels of the couch. And I have to like dig in there and you find like cereal and you're like digging in and you're like, oh, is that moving? And all of that kind of stuff but you eventually find the remote. Now, does the remote really matter? Not really, because it's low on the importance totem pole. Like if you had to get a new remote, you could. Now, as things go up in importance, the fear of losing them grows greater. So a good example is, what if you lose your phone? Have you ever lost a phone? That is super scary. I want. I saw a, a, a 13 year old girl once at an event. She left her phone on another part of the event and I saw the look of sheer terror as the blood drained from her face when she said the dreaded words, where's my phone? Horrifying. Now it gets scarier when you start to get even more important. What about an animal? What about like a dog or a cat? That's where it's like just sorrow. And it's like, oh my gosh, I can't find my dog. And you see these posters sometimes on buildings and stuff like dog missing and you're just like devastated and you want them to find that dog and bring him home. But there's nothing. Without question, nothing as scary as when a person goes missing. When a human being goes missing. That's the most horrifying thing in the world. And it happened to me one day when I went to a water park with my son. So let me tell you the story. Parker and I, my, my, my son Parker, he was about three, four years old at this time, and we were at this water park together. And I, so I have a love-hate relationship with water parks because like, I love the slides, but I really dislike the germs, and I really dislike the fact that large, hairy men are like running around with gold jewelry and stuff, and I just, what the, never mind. Parker and I are at this water park, and we're having an amazing time. And I look over at Parker to the left and I'm like, dude, what's up, buddy? And he's loving it. And then I, I look over to the right because I hear a noise. And then I look back to the left and he's gone. And there's always that initial thing like, it's okay, it's okay. You know, where are you? Dude, where are you? And that's when the feeling changes. What was once fun becomes horror because you can't find someone. And I start looking everywhere and, and the blood just drains from me and every minute feels like a year and I'm, I'm just devastated. And I'm, I'm screaming at this point and I don't care who hears me. I don't care. I need to find my son. So after about a minute or two, that feels like literally the longest two minutes of my life, I look into one of these like foam castles that shoots water and there inside is my son Parker. He has not realized at all that he has aged me by 20 years. He does not realize that I was scared. He doesn't realize he was missing. See, isn't that ironic? He was just living his best little life. He didn't know what danger he was in. He didn't know that he had separated himself from me. He didn't realize that his loving father, the dad that would do anything for him and keep him safe, he was apart from me. He was just having fun and living his life. So why do I tell you that story? Well, it has everything to do with the fact that, that Jesus misses people. Jesus misses people. And what does that mean? Does that mean like Jesus can't find them? No, like God is God. Like he can see everyone where they are in the world. It means that there's some people that their life and their choices and the sin that has entered their life separates them spiritually from God. First thing, I want you to write this down. Write this down for me, would you? Without Jesus, we are lost. It's that simple. Much like Parker, we're lost. We may not realize it. We don't realize how much danger we're in being separate from God. 
but without Jesus, you're lost. Can I tell you, uh, th there's a Bible story that I just think is so good. Let's read it together. Uh, it's actually found in the book of Luke, chapter 15. It says this, Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that at the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. So what ba Jesus is basically saying is he's saying like, he as, as our loving God will stop at nothing. And that's another thing I want you to write down. That's our big idea is Jesus loves the one. Jesus loves the one. He doesn't just love the people that love him. He loves the people that are far from him. Even the people that don't like him. The people that are angry at him. The people that have never known Jesus. He's like, I love you and I'm coming after you. Here's the thing that's ironic is those of us who feel safe, those of us who know Jesus and have a relationship with Jesus, sometimes we don't understand that our job is to go out searching for the one. We get selfish with Jesus sometimes. We go like, I'm good, I'm safe, I'm, I'm what, what, what's it matter? I'm gonna go to church, I'm gonna live my life, I'm gonna have the love of Jesus, but it doesn't really matter about those other people. They can live their life, they can be missing as long as I'm found. We are selfish with Jesus, but we can't be selfish with Jesus, guys. We can't because our God misses that person that's far from God. And I want you to have an image in your head of that person. Maybe it's a kid at school or a neighbor, someone on your, on your sports team, whatever. That kid that you know has no relationship with Jesus whatsoever. Are you gonna be selfish with Jesus? Are you gonna realize that Jesus misses that kid and your Jesus connection to that kid? Let me wrap it up by saying this. The day I lost Parker for even like a minute or two was one of the scariest days of my life. But if I had had my Collide students, if all of my friends and brothers and sisters in Collide had been at that water park with me, I would have rallied you guys together and I would have said, guys, will you help me find my son? And I know my Collide friends, I know you guys would have been like, let's do this thing. And you guys would have torn that water park apart. It would have been a little army going after that, that boy. Parker wouldn't have been able to leave, leave anywhere without you guys finding him first. And I know you would have done that for me because you love me. Our God today is asking you, will you help me find my kid? And you know him. He or she is in your class or, or somewhere close by. And our God is saying, will you help me find my kid? Will you say yes? That's your job. So today, maybe you just think of the name. Today, maybe you think about how you're gonna invite someone. But remember, even though they don't know they're missing, doesn't mean they're not lost. We love you guys. Have an amazing week.